All right, we'll call this meeting to order. It's been a request to allow remote participation from member Rutledge under Section 7A of the Open Means Act, pursuant to Section A of the Open Means Act, if the quorum of members of the public body is physically present as required by Section 2.1, a majority of the public <laughs> body may allow a member of the body to attend the meeting by other means if the member is prevented from physically attending because of personal illness or disability employment purposes or the business of the public body, a family, or other emergency. Is there a motion to allow member Rutledge? I will move to allow Please. member Rutledge to attend remotely. Second. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, member Rutledge, you are now part of our meeting. We'll do the roll call. Desart? Here. Echo? Here. Garcia? Here. Pajuski? Here. Rutledge? Here. Cornatory? Okay, we do have a quorum here, so we'll move on to public comment. Anybody sign in, Christy? Public no comment. comment? No public comment. Um, chairman remarks, um, just uh, a couple things. I know we, they talked at the uh, last regular board meeting about House bill to repeal. Um, again, I don't think that's going to go anywhere. Um, How many days are we to? Pardon? I keep watching the countdown. We're like so many days till it actually becomes law. I think we're like 10 or something like that. Nine? Nine? Third. And the motion, or the, actually the, 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 the motion to repeal it is in the uh, Consumer Protection Committee, and there's enough folks on there that, that it's not going to get out of that committee. Um, but even if it did, it, I don't think it's going to go anywhere in the Senate. Um, I think uh, Senator Holmes has talked to leadership that there's no intent to even bring a bill out. So okay. that one should, uh, should go. And is this going to be it, or are they going to keep bringing it up perennially? That should be it. I mean, I think they, they did a a big effort in the fall, they brought on more lobbyists. Her babies hired a pretty well-connected lobbying firm of ex-staffers oh. that were with, um, I think, both parties, Republican and Democrat. So they you know, have good relationships with them, but they've been in uh, constantly talking to these legislators. Uh, but many of them, I think, have been educated thanks to the work of, you know, Leslie Page and other places that they, you know, they know now. So lobbyists can talk to their blue in the face. Good, good, thank you. Okay, like I said, they're on both <clears throat> both sides. I think they had some somebody was with Madigan's firm, and then I think they have whoever the Senate Republican. Um, I think her husband is, you know, was hired over there too. So there's like both sides because I know I talked to Senator Kern the other day, and the person wanted a you know a meeting with him, and it's like I co-sponsored the bill. There's no way mm -hmm. I come from DuPage, and there's no way I go, you can talk to me. I'll take a meeting, but mm -hmm. I'm not, not going to change my mind. So. Good. Good. So I think that's uh, probably. Finally, over with. Um, and then, State Attorney Berlin has uh, the one bill that they've been pushing down, and I think Senator Herx, yeah, Rep. Conroy is uh, sponsoring. Um, but that's the one to give judges more authority to pull away. Sometimes they get a suspended sentence, and then you know the animal can stay there. But this will give the judge more leeway. We've had, I think, two specific cases down in West Chicago. I think there was one just recently too that uh, they were working on. And Alyssa Robaleski. Is gonna, you know, the work she's done is getting the award from the Animal De Legal Defense Fund. And she was in our legislative session um, committee meeting last time. Liz was okay. To totally describe the the bill, it's great. It's great. To see. That's all we get behind that, and I think you know, other <laughs> legislators, like I said, that's you know, Bob Berlin's office wrote it. Rob Conroy's, you know, carrying it for him. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll move on to our minutes. So we've got a motion to approve our annual service committee regular meeting of November sixteenth. So moved. Second. Any additions, corrections, comments? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Minutes carry. I will move on to our procurement request. Uh, motion for consent on decrease and close out animal service mm -hmm. contracts with Butler. Second. Questions, comments? All in favor? So, you know what? I got one question. Yeah. Have we gone into doing more of a like a monthly ordering? And so, you know how we were cutting checks every week and we were getting the finance department charging us a million dollars for every check we wrote. Right. So, so we on more of a- like, They've been encouraged to try to consolidate orders as much as possible. And finance has implemented some changes um, where we're now doing more bill entry. I don't know if that's also an effort I'm doing to- all of the bill entry. Now. Yeah. So is that going to, have you talked about, is that going to cut down on their overhead costs that they still spread? I think that's the idea. I mean, that wasn't clearly communicated, I think. Because uh, I mean, the methodology was on the number of checks written. Yeah, I mean, there's still a fair amount of parts to how they're doing some of those indirect costs that I'd love to learn more about when we go through this next cycle. 
um, so that we can be more effective and efficient. And for whatever reason, we, I mean, via small budget, do we have $2 million? We were being allocated a, an overabundance, if you look based on the size of budgets, um, of the finance time was allocated to our uh, budget. So we were an enterprise fund, so we would have to take, you know, 102, how much is it, 200,000? Uh, 150. So 150,000 has to come out of our animal services funds and go to cover overhead. And uh, specifically on the accounting side, it was a big number compared to say the clerk's office or uh, that has, you know, 30 or 15 million budget. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And hence why they were redoing that whole plan because uh, it didn't make sense either. <laughs> all right, uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. An administrative update. Yeah, so it has been since November was our last meeting. So happy new year. And I wanted to share our 2021 shelter stats because um, 2021 was definitely a much higher intake year and more challenging for our team, obviously compared to 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, even with that, we ended the year with an 89% live release rate. So that's Great. two more percentage points up from the prior year. Um, and when we look back to, you know, 10 years ago, we were in the, I think, 57% range, you know, so really that we keep trending upwards. And a lot of that is due to increased community engagement. <clears throat> People in the community want us to save more lives responsibly, and they are putting in the effort to share stories, donate, advocate for the animals, um, try to find solutions on their own. Uh, one big thing I'm, I'm so happy about is we've got increased community engagement through our social media channels. So last year alone, we doubled the number of Facebook followers. Um, we've got a phenomenal part-time marketing contractor that DuPage Animal Friends helps uh, supply us. Mm -hmm. And we are getting people from other counties uh, even copying our social media. <laughs> We're you know, stealing some of those ideas. We've got um, other shelters regularly calling us saying, hey, how are you getting those pictures and getting those posts up? Um, so we've really been increasing our following, which, you know, it helps get lost animals home faster. Yeah, it gets absolutely. animals adopted quicker. Um, we have an increase in in-kind donations. You know, we put a call out that we need paper bedding for all the small animals. We get inundated the next day through Amazon orders or whatever. It's been so, we're so grateful for that. Um, and we've seen a huge growth in our foster program. So, you know, if we can get healthy animals, um, or even unhealthy ones that maybe need a little bit longer stay to be seen by our doctor, the ability to place them in foster homes and reserve our kennel space for those animals that truly, truly need it mm -hmm. is really helping us manage our, our changing population. Just put that in perspective, as she said, it was 57% 10 years ago. I think this committee started six or seven years ago and that was one of the things <laughs> that to look at was increasing the life release rate. Um, at the time we went and looked at the, the top shelters in the country and I think it was Austin, Texas had the number one and they were 91% live release rate because I mean, you have some animals that are brought there because they don't want to take them to get euthanized because they're 16 years old and they're two days from dying and they just give them to us. And then, you know, that unfortunately that's a count as one that doesn't get out. But right. 91 was the top in the country. And then we did uh, send staff to all these different places. I know Christy went down to New Orleans to the main uh, council conference. We sent people to Austin to see how it was being run in Cleveland. And then they brought a lot of those ideas back. And then we've been able to a great job in implementing the host and to get that rate up to where it's at. Yeah. Plus, our vet now is doing a very good job of saving animals that in the past were a lot of times you know, euthanized. But you know what? As a just a, a regular person, I can totally understand that. I was sharing that we lost our Bailey, our dog Bailey, um, in December, and he's been dying for a year. We knew he was going in the last couple of weeks, we knew he was going, and then when he finally did pass. He wasn't in pain, so we passed in our home, and it was three hundred and fifty dollars to cremate him. So I can understand why people would go, oh, "My dog's old, please take him." Yeah. Right, that's exactly. What we get a few of those, yeah. and we take them. I mean, we've been we take care of them, but yeah. you know, we have to unfortunately count that as one that comes in and doesn't right. go out. Right, so right, it affects right, our right. percentages. So you never, you know, when some people ask, you know, are you a kill shelter? Well, I, I mean, we don't have a hundred percent. Well, we're not a kill shelter, but. There's, you know, right. unfortunate, or one gets hit by a really car. The quality of life on the animals. Yeah. That's what's true. We've had injured animals brought in too, where they get hit by a car and yeah. they come in, and unfortunately they come in yeah. and get out. And once again, we're so grateful for donor support, you know, and the board at DuPage Animal Friends. Just this past year, you mentioned hit by car. We had a hit by car dog that 
you know, Naperville took and then transferred to us because they don't have a bed on staff or the capacity for care that we could provide. Um, we, we did leg amputations, CT scans, other orthopedic surgeries, things that normally would be outside the realm of a typical government animal control agency. We don't have to think twice about when it comes to quality of life for that animal, mm -hmm. which is really because of our donor support. So are they still transferring us some of the very hard animals like the pit bulls that are aggressive are they still transferring all stuff um well like any police department they have the option after either during or after a stray hold to transfer that animal to us well i'm talking they, neighborville specifically because they specifically, got their own animal services we have the ex quote yeah well there. their animals they Did she stopped sending them to us we do receive some animals from neighborville them. i know they also try to transfer to neighborville animal or area because at the society. time they were sending us all the problems yeah, I mean, we tend to get ones that they struggle to move. Um, you know, I think they know that we've once again got a good following and, you know, so um, so that's that has been a really um, shiny moment for us, you know, getting not that we strive to be no kill, but that terminology we want to just say we want to look at every animal as an individual, find, give it the best care and provide the best outcome. And the fact that we're getting close to that 90% live release rate required to be no kill is, is, is really nice to see, um, but we're trying to do all of this responsibly. So, um, I, I, you know, a huge win for us was that new rabies tax sale process. 2021 was the first year that we were invoicing and collecting fees at the time of uh, the vets procuring the tags and huge success. Um, and then when we also looked at our tax sales year over, uh, from the prior year, we had a 20% increase in one-year tax sales and a 30% increase in three-year tax sales. So um, that was huge for us and our collection processes just continue to get tighter. And our relationships with the vets are something we're still always working on, increasing our communication. We did started doing a quarterly newsletter to them, mm -hmm. doing more you know, phone calls and just trying to be a resource to them, not just somebody that's trying to collect a fee and, and add another, you know, layer of work onto their staff. So um, another huge one is our education program. You know, we had hired a new humane educator um, during the pandemic, and we delivered over 77 programs last year, both online. We brought back some in-person opportunities. Um, and what I really love is that we increase the type of education we're providing to other agencies. So in addition to CERT, you know, the CERT uh, Community Emergency Response Team, we started delivering programming to our police departments, we offered a bite prevention program to um, county employees that might, you know, maybe they go out and do facility uh, zoning type things or, you know, whatever it might be where they're encountering animals when they're out on the job. Um, and we're looking to just continue increasing that. And then once again, through social channels, making sure that we're providing education, kind of that trickle down of things, not just about domestic pets, but about wildlife as well. Um, our spay neuter season was strong. So in addition to the hundreds and hundreds of animals we spay and neuter just through our adoption program, we had over 300 animals go through our, our PPF program, which is that low income spay neuter program. In fact, we allocated over $30,000 more than we normally would to that program to make sure residents pets were getting spayed and neutered. Mm -hmm. And then we had um, almost 600 cats uh, get serviced through the spay neuter vehicle too. Have we ever done the accounting on the what's in the PP or the, the yeah. pet population? We, we revisit it every year to kind of see where we're at. We definitely overspent last year, but I think it was needed. There was oh, sure, a lot sure. of need in well, the community. I think, I think there should be no reserve anyways because of the fact that our own oh, is correct. allowed. So I don't know if we've ever done the accounting for it or it's just, we yeah. just pump it all in. We just say there's nothing left. In the spirit, yeah. And in the spirit of wanting to spay neuter, yes, we could probably deplete the fund every year just through our own animals at the shelter. But I guess the question is, are we... Are we tracking it separately? We don't necessarily track it separately to like to a fine detail because the way doctor the way all of our hospital uh, vets have tracked surgeries is through a paper log, so we don't have the ability to like run a quick report of how many spay neuters we did. So for accounting purposes, shelter. do we have a reserve for pet population? Yeah, we've Craig and Christy, you can help me. We we've, <coughs> we've got like what what it is through the, what we take in from tags and what we spend in the program, but we don't have a good accounting of how many animals we do in the shelter. We would have to actually open up paper books. All right. And well, I'm just wondering, so for time purposes, we just 
we don't have any and then every year comes in and we're always spending more between our own plus that yeah so finance doesn't track that separate there's no separate like accounting company for that it's just something we do internally okay so, well, i know what this, the yeah. law says we got to spend the x on yeah only and if we look at just what we spend through the low-income PPF program, we've depleted that every now we, time. Well, not, not now, but not before we weren't. Um, there were some years when we were over and some years when we were slightly under. Yeah. Right. And I can get a report if you just want to look no, at No, I don't just want a report. PPF. I just want to know what we did with it. Yeah. Because that was issued two years ago. I just had a brainstorm about how to make some more money. Yeah. The, you talked about the education and the no bike classes. I would bet corporate corporations would pay tens of thousands of dollars for those educational opportunities. Um, the no bike classes specifically, ComEd, NICOR, Comcast, mm -hmm. all of those businesses that have people going out in the field, going door to door, checking meters, whatever. Yeah, that'd be a great money generator, I would think. That would be interesting. I know one of our more popular programs that was generating revenue for us was also the PET CPR and first aid classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are restarting that this year. Mm -hmm. We took a pause because it's that's one of those classes that you have to do in person. Mm -hmm. To do it virtually was challenging. Uh, so our new educator just recently got certified to teach that. And we're going to start offering that class. That was a nice revenue generator for us. And it was a course that we have high demand for too. I would love to go yeah. to a course like that. Not last night, but the day before, I gave my dog Lily a new treat that I hadn't given her before. Whenever I buy treats, they're always USA. I always buy USA treats. And she, um, something didn't affect her right. And she was, sorry to the public watching this, but she was spitting up like white foam for about an hour. Oh. And I was like, do we go to the vet? Do we not go to the vet? What do we do? Yeah. And she worked it out and it was fine, but I'd love to go to it. And I just feel like yeah. a little bit more confident, like right. you know what to do. Yeah. So we're going to be advertising those shortly. We need to procure some space to do it because gotcha. we used to do it at the care center. And with COVID, I don't know that we have the capacity to ask. We might be looking for another space in the county to host that. Um, do you have space in the new building? Yes, we will. <laughs> um, well, and one of the things I wanted to put on your radars early is if, um, you know, we're already starting to look at the calendar for the spay neuter vehicle to show up at events and like what things are we going to be participating okay. in. So if there are events in your district um, that you are attending or that you would like us to bring the vehicle to, the sooner I can get those types of dates, the better. Right. And how does that work? Do people pay? At the, at the van, at the vehicle? No, most of the time, the events that we're doing, we are not paying a fee to participate. Um, and it's not- No, a no, no, I mean people who would bring their animal to be spayed or neutered. Oh, no, so it's, an we, it's, it's more of an educational oh. opportunity. So yeah. what we, we have a couple, we have games, educational games for kids. We oh. sometimes will bring animals um, that are adoptable and showcase them. You know, gotcha. they have all those little okay. cages in the front. Um, but to remember the start's question, um, we're working with the Brooks McCormick Foundation are we still there? We're looking at doing the going into the, I was maybe like a Bloomingdale, the low income area to do a sort of a program like that. That's a program Dr. Hannock was working with Tim on and then the pandemic hit. So I right. don't know if there's conversations about doing more outreach off site with it yet. But we're struggling to find that. That was something help. that they wanted to do, right? It Foundation. was, but um, we're struggling to find veterinary help. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, we're by possibly Von Waldo, Von losing Von Dr. Von Waldo this season. And so Dr. Hannock has been putting feelers out to see if there's any vets that might that can do, you know, there's veterinarians and then there's veterinarians that can do high volume spay neuter and there are different skill sets and levels of experience. And that's where there's a shortage. Well, for September 10th and 11th, we're doing Maple Pride Fest to get a neighbor settlement. Yeah. So that would be 10th and 11th? September 10th and 11th. Okay. At neighbor settlement, that would be fantastic okay. to have the vehicle. Out and one of the things you could do with that is um, maybe partner with either Adopt or Naperville Humane Society, where they can bring their animals out to the van that are up for adoption. Okay. And adopt, say they're going to adopt. Adopt. Right? Well, they're the two out of Naperville, but Adopt, and then um, what's what's it, what's her name exactly? Adopt. Chris Stern. Oh, the Naperville Humane Society. And then Naperville yeah, Humane yeah, yeah. Society, but Chris Stern's over in Adopt. But those two, they can bring their animals that are up for adoption. And what bring our animals? We don't necessarily have this. We normally, for the vehicle, we normally bring cats and yeah. rabbits. Okay. Um, 
depending on the dogs we have, sometimes those types of events can be very stressful for right. them. Oh, I get that. And if yeah. the dogs that we have in the shelter are have higher stress levels, that might not. And mm -hmm. so it always, you know, we look at oh, the event day coming up and then what's our population look like? What animals gotcha. do we have that can handle going out for a couple of hours in a crowd, uh, you know, with all the extra activity? More stress. Yeah. And some of those places like the West Burbank Humane Society was doing the Park of Beluza, the band came out for their animal event. If, you know, any of the animal in your districts are doing um, something our band can participate with. Right. Well, and then also, as Chairman Kondrzewski mentioned, you know, the ability for us to access training, to see what other shelters are doing, that ties into our next agenda item, which is uh, the Chicagoland Humane Coalition. So that's a group of 12 area um, animal shelters that we've been meeting with for the last couple of years, mostly virtually lately, but talking about best practices, how do we support pets and people in our community, and we talk about issues that are local to the Chicagoland area. Um, it's, it's been a great uh, group that we've been supporting each other and sharing what we're doing. We've transferred animals between our groups. We're trying to get our messaging aligned so that, you know, if we're talking about what to do when you find kittens outdoors, it, it matches what South Suburban Humane Society is saying or what Chicago Animal Care and Control is saying. Um, so we continue to just want to learn from what everybody else is doing so that we can keep doing more modern things and saving the saving Is this a new coalition? So we've, we've been meeting for a while, for a couple of years, but we're doing more formalization around the structure because we'd like to start inviting more, more local shelters or maybe even rescue groups to join us. Okay. So this is, a, we're actually, you know, formalizing something that we've been kind of already doing. With, with regards to many years ago, maybe Christy can chime in on that, but we had, a, wasn't there an umbrella group that was there for the whole county with all the different rescues? DASA, which disappeared many, many years ago, and we kind of indirectly have sort of started that up again, having some direct working with Hinsdale Humane, West Suburban, Naperville, and ADAP. Hinsdale's part of um, the coalition, yeah. But are we doing, are we looking at DASA again for the local one's going to page? Or? I think the hope is that the Chicago Land Humane Coalition. Yeah, well, Chicago Land Humane Coalition is kind of replacing that and okay. expanding outside just our local DuPage So area. Hinsdale's part of it? Yes. But what about like the other big ones like Naperville Humane or ADAP or West Suburban? They have not joined us, but I don't think that's, I think we've been trying to get more structure to the group first before we start inviting Because they've reached out to me several times more. Well, Hinsdale, um, regarding those four and with us working more together where West Suburban just built a new facility. So they were like, yeah. maybe we could have the puppies over there um, because they're bigger, um, but trying to do stuff where they have a specialty between the groups and do more interaction between. Yeah. Our hope is that we can continue building who we're collaborating with. So that's, that's a nice part about um, formalizing this group a little bit. Uh, you know, having some, having MOUs in place. Okay. Um, and I, I just wanted to say, I really, we're not on that item yet, but I really appreciated the sliding scale for membership between 50 and $200. I, yeah. I think that's a good thing for various organizations too. Yeah. And Best Friends has been um, a, a national organization that's been kind of spearheading, helping us get this coalition off the ground. So. And that is it for my update, unless you guys have any questions. How's the amount of surgery? Has Hannah been able to handle all the surgeries over there? Yeah, things have slowed down. And back in January, we actually had to intentionally slow down intake because COVID hit our staff pretty hard. Um, we were very short staff for many of the weeks during January, but now we're back at um, taking a regular intake call. And, do, and we still have, for the small animals, we still have... Um, so that, Dr. Brown, Dr. yes. Dr. Brown still doing all those. Yes, DuPage Animal Friends okay. still helps fund Dr. Brown for us. I did have a question. Um, did we see any, I hope we did, any um, Betty White bump in January? We did. Good. And that was, and we didn't even really ask. We questioned if it was, the timing was right. And it was, that whole campaign was just so organic. Like people it just did it. it we had, yeah. and we were closed that day because it was a holiday. Oh. But I happened to be in the shelter with one other team member, and people were knocking on the door to bring us donations. It was That's so amazing. nice. Oh, yeah, it was, wow. it was wonderful. Yeah, uh, in fact, Villa Park Library did a drive, and they just dropped off. And that's at your district. They just dropped off a bunch of in-kind donations. So we're even still seeing 
stuff rolling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was so sweet. Yeah. With it, I will move on to our membership agreement. Then I'll have a motion for a resolution acceptance agreement to become a member of the Chicago Land Humane Coalition. So moved. Second. Questions, comments, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Any old business? Any I guess quick question about the old business. Just the update on the building in terms of when it's going to be coming back to the board for any kind of more information. Uh, yeah. we, can, we can both do it. Okay. <laughs> so I, I can, I can happy to say that we met as a team what last week, week before something like that. Yeah. And we're really zeroing in on, uh, on that project. Okay. Great. And I, I, we're refining the PowerPoint. In fact, I just sent out the, my latest revisions, I think Sunday this week to, to the team. We're incorporating that. So okay. at that point, we'll, we'll probably meet with the chair and vice chair first, kind of go through and then go from there. So we're we're definitely on track and it's looking good. I mean, I don't know if you if there's anything what's, else you want to add. What's, to the, what's the amount of the ARPA money that would qualify for? Uh, a little bit less than a million dollars. Okay. So, so I mean, we, at some point we got to address that just issue. See what that, that's part of the whole PowerPoint, the, okay. the funding, funding okay. portion of it. I mean, we want to, I mean, our goal as a team is to give, you know, this committee and the entire board the complete picture from beginning to end of this project. And I think we're right there on the cusp. And I appreciate that. And thanks for the question, Member Garcia, because when I first got on this board, um, one of the first things I did is go to animal services. And I saw that whole presentation and it was massive and wonderful and incredible. And I was supportive of it. But I think between, that was three years ago. I think between then and now, projects shrunk a little bit yes. and I don't have any concept at all of the project right now. Yeah. And we're excited. So to I would love to hear your presentation. Guys. Yeah. Where, where are we at right now? How much money do we need right now? I know Chairman Krajewski and I have lobbied Senator Holmes and Senator and, and Rep Kipowit on getting some state dollars. Um, no, that no. was even two years ago. I mean, that was a while ago now. So I would love to know, have a presentation. Where are we right now? Yep, and that's what our team's been working on. We've okay. scaled the project back to something that's more attainable, but okay. still meets the needs of what we're doing. And what and what were the programs we're delivering and the services we're delivering out of that shelter have also changed a little bit in the last three to four years since we went through that whole process. So yeah, we'll be doing those presentations um, with you, you guys first and then in some small groups with the rest of the uh, Thank you very members. much. I'm looking forward yeah. to that presentation. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you. Any new business? No. The objection, we are adjourned. Yay, thank, thank you, you. Laura. Yeah. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. Yes, I want to yeah, 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 we have I'll be over there with my box of the first couple months that we have Yeah, sure. Yeah, so this is your day. Yeah, I really am. I'll be over later with my box of paper.